Today we're going to be checking out the Canon ZR60 from 2003. We'll be going over some of the specs, the features, and at the end of the video we'll check out some of the test footage that comes out of this camcorder to see if it's worth adding to your camera collection. Hey there, welcome back to my camera collection. If you're new to this channel, we like to check out old school retro camcorders from the 80s, 90s, 2000s, and mid 2000s. So if you're into retro camcorders like I am, maybe stick around and consider subscribing. Now before we get started trying a different uh, look here, I was kind of getting tired of the uh, the, the long shot uh, look. So I, I'm trying a different look with the, uh, I got a 10 millimeter to 18 millimeter lens on my camera here. And I'm actually filming with a Canon M50 today instead of my regular Canon SL3. Along with this here mic, Trying to figure out where I could put this mic at to get a better look with it. So right here is kind of where it's at. I've kind of moved the little tray thing for my camera. So it's just now sitting on the uh, table itself now. I have another video where I will try out my XLR mic. So let me know what mic you like better. Uh, if you like this Rode mic better or if you like the sound of this XLR shotgun mic. It's just really big. Also real quick, I just want to thank everybody for 4,000 subscribers. I know that's not a whole lot, but it's nice to be able to see the milestones that we're hitting. So if you're one of those 4,000 subscribers, thanks for sticking around and enjoying the channel. So if you've been watching this channel for a while, you've seen that I did a review on the Canon ZR45. Well, this is one of the, I guess, successors of the ZR45. This is the ZR60. And the whole reason I bought this camera was because I bought, well, I have another ZR60. It's in another room and it's in pieces because this one, well, the, the ZR60 that I have in the other room, it had an issue with the, uh, the the tape drives that drive the tape and they were stuck and I tried taking it apart and uh, messing with it, seeing why it was doing that. And I ended up breaking it. So I was like, well, crap. All right, I'm gonna go on to eBay and I'm gonna find the cheapest uh, Canon ZR60 that I can find and just use that other camera for parts for this one. Well, I got this camera and I, man, I paid maybe 10 or $20 for this with shipping and it turned out to work completely fine. I was like, are you serious? So I took it out and I filmed some stuff along with some other test footage and stuff like that. And it was working completely fine with the tape that it came with in it. And I would try another tape and it didn't like that tape for some reason. Long story short, one of the pinch rollers, you can see that they're, they're taped right here, uh, fell off. I think it just, just came unscrewed because the little nut is on there as well. So I gotta put that back together. And now the, uh, for some reason, the tape door won't close. So I'm not really sure why it's not wanting to close for that. I guess that gives me a reason to replace the parts and stuff on this camera with the other one that I have. So I'll probably replace the screen and stuff like that on here. The screen works fine. It's just, it's really scratched and stuff on the body. And if I remember right, the other Canon ZR60 that I have has a better looking screen. It's not so scratched and smudged up. So I'll have a video I'll post later on of me taking these cameras apart and hopefully fixing it. I'm still learning a lot on a lot of these cameras on how to fix them. But if you wanna be able to, if you wanna learn how to work on cameras and just kinda of teach yourself and not feel so anxious about breaking it, a lot of mini DV camcorders by Canon are actually pretty simply made. There's not a lot of parts that are just crammed together and it's pretty easy to take apart and put back together. So that's what we'll be doing. So yeah, if you wanna try uh, working on camcorders, snag yourself uh, one of the Canon ZR series and you'll probably be able to uh, fix it yourself, most likely. So that's a little of the backstory on the ZR60 here. So we'll go over the specs and some of the features and then we'll go and check out the test footage that comes out of this guy. I didn't get a lot of test footage with it just because it broke <laughs> and I was having just tape issues. I got a couple skate park clips at a skate park kind of about, about two and a half hours away. So starting off with some of the specs, this camera does have a one sixth inch CCD sensor in it. It's got a single CCD sensor and that sensor creates 380 
thousand pixels. I think you can, it has uh, 340,000 effective pixels in it. Because it's such a small sensor, the video quality honestly isn't great on it. To me, it almost has more of like a, like a video eight, high eight look to it. Even though like you can have a, a digital look out of it, it still just kind of has a real retro look to it. I kind of like the way that the footage looked. So all tape camcorders have two lengths that you can use for the tape. Well, two, two speeds. So you have SP and LP. SP stands for short play and you get better video quality but less time on the tape and so you'll get about 80 minutes on a tape and if you use LP or long play you'll have worse video footage or I guess less video quality but you'll get 120 minutes on a tape so two hours on a tape versus 80 minutes on a tape which still um, having that much time on a tape I still recommend using short play just for having the best video quality possible and if you want to rewind a tape end to end or fast forward it end to end so rewind it from the end of the tape to the beginning of the tape or fast forward it from the beginning of the tape to the end of the tape it will take two minutes and 20 seconds for it to fully rewind or fast forward all the way. Now, I don't really recommend doing the super fast rewind or fast forward on it. I just feel like it, because the, the pieces in the tape deck are moving so fast, it can cause the camera to malfunction, especially because they're a lot older nowadays, but you can hit play and then hold fast forward or rewind and it'll rewind or fast forward like much slower but you're probably gonna have less of a chance of the camera having some kind of faulty issue. So I kind of recommend doing that instead. It's a little more time consuming and annoying because you gotta hold the button, but you can watch the footage and actually make sure that uh, it's not uh, glitchy or uh, you don't have dirty tape heads or something like that. This little guy has a 18 times optical zoom along with a 360 times digital zoom. It's probably not gonna be great on that digital zoom, but 18 times optical zoom is pretty good. You'll definitely have quite a range of a, of a zoom with the 18 times optical zoom, and then you don't have to worry about the digital zoom ruining your image while you're recording. But using a little bit of the 360 times digital zoom, I think would be okay, but definitely don't recommend using all of it. The lens aperture is a f1.6 to a 2.9. Now this camera is pretty basic. There's not a lot of uh, manual functions that are in it, but you can perform manual and autofocus on it. I couldn't find any information on how much these cameras were when they were brand new, but my guess they'd probably be under a thousand bucks. It seems like videos and stuff that I've watched, a lot of people have said that these cameras were pretty cheap when they came out. So these were a pretty good budget friendly one, but I'm not exactly sure. They could have been under a thousand, they could have been about $1,500 because in 2003, I mean, you had a lot of different formats that were out. I mean, you had VHS was just barely out the door. VHS-C was now becoming obsolete. You had Video 8, High 8, Digital 8, and Mini DV. So like Mini DV, I think was probably like the, the highest end of video camera that you could get. Even though this is more of a budget friendly one, I still feel like because it was Mini DV, it was most likely the uh, more expensive option out of all the different kinds of uh, tape formats that were out in 2003. Now it does have a minimum focusing distance of, see if I can say this correctly, three feet, three and three quarter inches. That's if you have the camera zoomed all the way out as wide as it'll go. You can have the camera about 3.4 feet away from a subject or object and it will focus on that at about 3.4 feet. It does have a shutter speed range of one in 60 up to one in 2000. So not a super high shutter speed on it. So it doesn't do very good in low light, but Again, these were kind of more of a budget mini DV camcorder, so they probably didn't put a lot of, you know, bells and whistles into it. We do get a 0.33 inch colored viewfinder on this guy, and it creates 113,000 pixels. Not a bad little viewfinder that you get with this little guy. And you do get a 2.5 inch LCD screen on it, and it creates 112,000 pixels, so just a little bit less video quality or picture quality than the viewfinder. For some reason, viewfinders always have much more pixels than the screen does. I'm not exactly sure why. And one of the last important specs, in my opinion, it does weigh 1.2 pounds, so it's pretty light. And I, th I do believe that that's with a battery in it and a tape in it. Pretty light little camera, but 
light isn't always a good option if you don't have good stabilization. So those are just some of the specs. I couldn't find a whole lot on it. That'll do it for the specs. Let's go over the physical features on this little guy. So I'm kind of going back to the old way of doing my videos. I was kind of trying to simplify everything, maybe not go into so much detail on a lot of cameras. It kind of seems like a lot of you guys enjoyed the uh, more in-depth reviews on these camcorders. So definitely going back to kind of the, the the old way I used to do everything with going over the specs, uh, the features, and then the test footage. Maybe talking a little bit about what I think of the camcorder. So we'll go over the features now. So this little guy has a 30.5 or 30 and a half millimeter lens thread diameter. So if you want to run like a, some form of a filter, wide angle, telephoto, fisheye lens on there, 30.5 is what you'll need. Now, I know if, if you can find a Optica 37 millimeter fisheye, and you want to use this for some form of action sports filming. Now, obviously that's a 37 millimeter, but the Optica 37 millimeter fisheye that I have came with a few different uh, size step-up rings that are smaller than 37. And it comes with a 25, a 30, and a 30.5, along with the spacer ring. I'm not sure if the Village fisheye has those spacer rings included with it, but if you do get one of those little uh, 37 millimeter fisheye lenses, just make sure you get yourself a 30.5 millimeter uh, step up ring. So that way you can actually attach a fisheye to this little guy. Cause I believe 37 millimeter is as small as uh, fisheyes go. And some of the test footage I got, well, I think all the test footage I got was with the fisheye. Now, because it'll be a bigger lens thread diameter, the fisheye isn't going to be as wide as you would want it to. So you'd have to run probably a couple spacer rings to get it, get the vignetta. Vin is that how you say it, vignetta? <laughs> you got this little black bar right here, and that is your infrared receiver. So when you originally bought the camera, or if you still have, uh, you know, you're the original owner of one, you probably have a wireless remote, so you can push record and all that kind of stuff. Um, that's where the receiver is for that, for your little infrared remote. Along with that, you got your microphone up here, and it is a stereo microphone with this little mesh holes are. You got this little kind of purplish blue little cover here and you got S and you got DV. So on the bottom of that, you can pop that off and you have your plug-in for your Firewire import. So those are right there on the front for those video inputs. Coming along the side of the camera, obviously you got the screen here and I got the, the little pinch rollers and stuff taped to the side of it so I don't lose those because those things are so damn small you will lose those in a jiffy. So put those right there on the camera so I will remember it. But you got your playback functions right up here. So you got your rewind, fast forward, play slash pause, and your stop right there. Along with them, when you're in record mode, they play as uh, different functions as well. So you got a plus and a minus there. So that's to adjust your focus near or far. You have your focus button as well to turn the manual focus on or off. And then you have your AE shift. Now to open the screen itself you have this little switch right here usually you have to kind of pull them from right here but you do that it pops the screen open and then you get your 2.5 millimeter wow 2.5 millimeter you get your 2.5 inch lcd screen here but on the outside you get your menu button along with your kind of scroll wheel so you can move through the menu adjust the volume and playback and it pushes in like a button so you can select things in the menu and all that kind of fun stuff so you got a little charge light right here so if you plug it in if you plug like a power supply into it and you want to charge the camera um it'll i think either light up orange or green to indicate that it's charging and then i believe the light turns off when the battery is fully charged but popping open the screen you get a few buttons up in here and you do get your date and time code here along with your digital effects and your on and off for turning the digital effects on and off and then you have a switch for uh the p or the little square so p is technically manual mode and then the little rectangle square thing is auto mode you get this little compartment here and that is your uh battery to keep the internal clock going if you want to have the little timestamp down in the bottom corner that will that will keep the the battery going or the, the, the clock going, even if your camera dies or it's off. So those are all the buttons that are in there. Around the back side here, you have your battery release button. You wanna put the battery in or take it out. You have to lift the viewfinder up, push up on the battery and it comes straight out. And then make sure you keep the viewfinder up when you want to put the battery back in. And you'll start at the top and it clicks in place when you slide it down. 
Easy peasy. Just below the battery, you got your DC in or your charge port here, technically. Below the viewfinder, you got the little focus adjust here for your eyesight. And the record button here on the back, very traditional, obviously. Every camcorder has one of these, even modern modern ones there. But you also get your power switch there as well. And you got the little green button in the center. So that's kind of a little safety switch so you don't accidentally turn the camera on or off. So you gotta push that little green button in and then you can switch it to camera mode or playback mode. And then right in the middle is off. Up on top, you got your photo button right there, along with your uh, rocker zoom, kind of. It goes left and right instead of forward and back. These ones aren't too shabby. They're, they're not super small to where they have really small movements, and you can actually get a pretty decent uh, smooth zoom with it. So they're not bad. I don't mind them. You get your playback speaker right there. And then you got another little compartment here, and this is your, uh, your AV out slash headphone jack so you can go into the menu and you can actually switch that to an AV out or headphone jack so whatever one you need to use it for you can uh, switch it in the menu then the little red one there is your external mic plug-in you still get a mic import on it 3.5 millimeter headphone jack along with a 3.5 millimeter microphone jack and then you get a cold shoe up here so you can mount your mic on it whatever kind of mic that you need but make sure it is a powered mic, self-powered mic, because like this little mic here doesn't have to be powered by, well, it, it has to be powered by the camera. So like modern DSLRs and stuff, like what we're shooting with, will power this mic, but most camcorders won't power mics. So you have to have one that has an internal battery in it. Along the bottom, you get your quarter inch screws here, so you can put it on a tripod or a filming handle of some sorts. And then you have your tape eject switch here. This one's messed up for some reason, but you can switch that over and then pop it open and you can put your tape in. I don't have a tape in this one because it won't read a tape because the pinch roller or something has fallen off. I gotta fix that. But I mean, all in all, I mean, this camera's in pretty good shape. The handle doesn't look like it's been, you know, beaten up too much. It, it's not fraying and the, the logo's on there. Still pretty good. The only thing is it seems like it's just been slid around on the screen side of the camera. You can definitely tell that this camera was sitting in storage somewhere for a while or on a shelf or in a children's toy box or something. <laughs> All right, so let's talk a little bit about what I think on this camera. I'll start with the video footage and then I'll let you determine what you think of the video footage. So from the little bit that I recorded, the video footage seems a very less quality than what I was expecting it to be. And it kinda, I, I captured it with Firewire and it still kinda has more of an analog look to it. Uh, most of the time when I capture my footage, uh, I, I have a VCR that has a Firewire import with an HDMI out port and I convert it through USB. I'll show you, I, I'll have a card up above to show you my process on how I do that if you want one of those VCRs that do that. The reliability of this camera, I think because it's more of a cheaper camera, it probably isn't the most reliable, but a lot of these cameras can be hit or miss. I mean, like the first one that I got, I don't even remember where the heck I got it from. I, it, I've, it's been sitting here for a while, and so I finally took it apart and tried to figure out what was wrong with it because it would try to load a tape into it and then it would throw an error code telling me to eject it and it just had issues. And so that one was just completely broken. I also ended up breaking it. So yeah, I ordered this one and I was completely expecting it to have some form of an issue. It didn't and I was kind of using it and it ended up breaking on me. So reliability can be hit or miss with these. I say if you want one of these for your first mini DV camcorder and you just don't want to spend a lot, you just want to try one out, I would definitely recommend checking one out. Not necessarily like the ZR60, but just one of like the Canon ZR models. That you can pretty much find one from the ZR10 all the way up to the ZR960, which I believe was the very last mini DV camcorder ever made. And it was produced all the way up to like 2012. Debuted in 2009 and they stopped making it in 2012. Kind of wild. But yeah, any of the Canon ZR models I think would be a great first starter mini db camcorder if you want more of a if you want to play with some retro camcorders and so wow kind of losing my voice here the zr60 models you can find them on ebay used for a fairly good price if they are in working condition if you want to take a chance on one that is untested for parts like what i did you'll you can probably get them for a lot cheaper damn you can probably get them for a lot cheaper but even in like a known working one 
they're they're still not that much very expensive so if you want to check one out one of the zr60s or one of the the just a canon zr model is a great starter camcorder for mini dv i have a few other cameras and stuff up on my ebay store so if you're looking for a retro camcorder or you just want to support the channel in some form of way, you can shop on my eBay store, buy my camcorders that I review. All the money goes back into getting more camcorders and doing reviews. I also have some converters that are on there, video recorders. They're brand new, so if you want to uh, get into this, you can buy a uh, whole entire camcorder kit where it comes with the camcorder along with the video recorder itself and they're completely working. I only add those as a bundle with cameras that are completely working fine and they'll always come with a used tape. If you have a Canon ZR60 or similar, Canon ZR model in general, they all take pretty much the same battery. If you need a battery or a charger, tapes, some form of a video recorder, you want a fisheye for it, filming handles, uh, I'll leave all of those down in the description. And then if you're curious on what kind of cameras and equipment I use to film my videos, I'll have a little list of all the uh, accessories and cameras and stuff that I use to film my videos. So with all that being said, let's check out some of the test footage that comes out of this little Canon ZR60 from 2003. So thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, make sure you leave a like. And if you enjoy the content, make sure you subscribe because we talk about old school retro camcorders almost on a weekly basis. And on that note, we'll see you in the next video. Have a good one.